yours to Christ, let him shepherd you. Welcome him into your heart, that your love be true. For Christ is the light, and Christ is the way, and Christ is the love. Welcome to St. Patrick's, and let us now begin our liturgy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we celebrate the second Sunday now of Lent, and today our readings take us to Mount Tabor, a beautiful mountain, but it's also a quiet place of reflection, a place you can climb up to if you want, or you can take a taxi or a bus. I suggest you take the bus or the taxi. But however, there are many who climb around the mountain. It probably would take a good day to get around that mountain to the top because you have to walk around it and not straight up. But it is a powerful space when you get up there. You can see around for miles and miles and the church is marvelous that is there. And so as we think about the transfiguration of how Christ manifested himself to the three and how he manifests himself to us today, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us all to everlasting life. And let us pray, O God, who commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may explore to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram aside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall be your descendants. Abram put his faith in the Lord who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, bring me a three-year-old heifer and three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought these all to him, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abraham stayed with him. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared as a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying, to your descendants I give this land from the wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me, answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. Your presence, O Lord, I shall see the mountain. 
beauty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my light and my salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, hear him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy <clears throat> Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus. Then he was going to, that he was going to accomplish, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothes became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had over, been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them. And they became frightened when they entered the cloud. And from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son, listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen, the gospel of the Lord. Our gospel this morning or today asks us, would we be able to stand up and proclaim a message that others would say, take my, li take my life, I'm done? Would we be able to make a compelling case for Christ? How do we make a compelling case for Christ? To run to our brain, the best way to make the case for Christ is to explain it, to teach people about it, to su suggest to you that this is only half of the case. If all we do is explain our faith so that people can understand it, then it becomes a mental exercise of knowing. It is like breathing with one lung. We've missed half of what making the case is all about. In the gospel, it's about the other half. What do we do when it becomes, what do we do when it, when it is beyond our limitations? What do we do when you cannot figure Jesus out? What, you do what most people do, you back off. We hate not knowing what we're talking about. So we pull back and step aside then we no longer are able to make the case. The gospel gets us to breathe with the other lung, not just of knowing,
but of experience. If you want to make the case for Christ, you got to experience Christ. What an experience Peter, James, and John got. We hear how they went up, Mount, up to Mount Tabor, and how, what, and how this wonderful event took place that had to be a life-changing event for these three men. They came back down from Mount Tabor, and they could make the very case that they were, they could make the case they were very compelling. They spent time with Jesus. They were called, they walked with him, and they learned from him. They had to work for, his, for this experience. They had to go up to the mountain. It took time, but it was worth it. Peter's having a magical moment in his life. What, is, what does he say to the Lord? Let us build three tents. He wants to freeze the moment. Scripture says he didn't know what he was saying. He knew what he wanted. To, he knew he wanted to freeze the moment. Scripture says that's because you cannot freeze the moment. That's not what it was all about. You got to go back down Mount Tabor. Peter was able to, in so many ways, to make the case for Christ. Such that 2,000 years later, we're still trying because of the work that these three men and many others. Not, now it falls to us. Can we make the case? Of course, if we had the experience, we would all be able to make the case too. If Jesus would take me up to Mount Tabor and show me his glorified body, and Moses and Elijah would appear, and the heavens open, and God would say, this is my beloved son, I could be compelling too. We, we all have an unfair advantage. They saw something that we would never see. But what are we called upon is to begin to appreciate the transfigured moments in our everyday lives so that we don't miss out. What do we see? Why, do, why don't we see the Tabor in our own mist? We think Lent is penance for penance sake because we are sinners and we probably should try to make up for it a little bit. So we try to deny ourselves during these 40 days that will make God happy. We carry acts of penance during these 40 days to allow ourselves to have the, the blinders removed. We carry out penance so that we can sharpen our senses, that we often are dull by the things that are cluttered our lives each day. The Lord says, take a few days just to pull that stuff back so that you can begin to see the glory that surrounds you. Then you will see the glory. And then with Peter, you can say it is good to be here because you're starting to appreciate God's glory in many beautiful ways. Guess what happens? People start seeing Christ's transfigured glory in you, and then you become Mount Tabor, and that's the kingdom. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, intercedes for us as God's right hand, 
In total confidence, let us now pray for ourselves and for our world. That the church may be transfigured in love, conformed ever more fully to the heart and mind of Jesus Christ, we pray. That all suffering poor of the world may have access to the basic necessities of life, food, shelter, work, and community, we pray. That the sufferings and trials we encounter in our daily lives may be transfigured by our faith in the resurrection of Christ, we pray. That all of us gathered in this holy place may learn to set our own interests aside and reach out in love to our brothers and sisters in need, we pray. For an end of the war in Europe, we pray. That our beloved departed, especially those for whom this Mass is offered and those who are dying in war, may come into the radiant light and love of our Savior's presence, we pray. God of light and love, it is good that we are here. May our worship in this holy place lead us to, lead us to more faithful love and more generous service through Christ our Lord. There's a wideness in God's mercy Like the wideness of the sea There's a kindness in God's justice Which is more than liberty There is plentiful redemption In the blood that has been shed there is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we, ha we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. My dear friends, let us still continue to pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify, our, sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you and lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he told his disciples of his, coming, of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion led to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the power of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always and let us offer each other some sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. There's a wideness in God's mercy, 
like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. There is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. Again, this morning, our second collection is going to help us defray some of the costs that we're trying to keep going and keep things going here. Hopefully this weekend you'll see that the, the sod has been placed down and how nice it looks. We're also next working on the refrigerator in the hall that died, and um, that's going to be $3,500 to replace that. Hopefully that will be here this coming Friday. And also, um, don't forget on, on Fridays we have Mass at 5, stations at 5.30, and that we have a supper afterwards either a soup supper or a fish supper. But anyway, you're all invited to, to come and celebrate with us. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at, least, at last attain that glory whose beauty is shown in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, to Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now in peace. You.